be to God. Glory be to his name. Glory be to his name. Whatever may come, I will obey. I will obey. My life is depending on it. I said my life is depending on it. Glory, hallelujah. In life, I follow you. I'll follow you, Lord. Every season must be true. Cause I chose this path and I made this vow. And I will never turn around. Never turn because around.
Father God, Lord, you are all powerful, almighty. There is none like you. There is none like you, O Lord. You are awesome. You are awesome. I thank you right now, Father God. I thank you, O Father. And I, I, I pray that you please open the ears of of all of us, O oh Lord, open the ears of all of us that we may be susceptible to your word, O oh Lord, that we can intake your word and that it will remain in our lives and remain in our hearts, O oh Lord. For everyone that hears this video, I pray, O oh Lord, I pray for them, O oh Lord, that you begin to turn their hearts in a mighty way, O oh Father God. Begin to turn their hearts in a mighty way, O oh Father God. We, I release and rebuke every demonic activity that may be trying to withhold us from your presence, O oh Lord. I, I rebuke, I bind every demonic spirit, O oh Lord, that may be trying to stop us from getting close and receiving the things that you have for us, O oh Lord. You said we shall go from glory to glory, O oh Father God. God. And I pray that everyone that hears this, including me, that we be transformed from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Glory be to your holy name. I thank you and I praise your holy name. Please let your spirit take over me right now, Father God. Let your spirit take over me right now, Father God, that you may minister to the ears of all of us, oh Father God, including me. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' precious name, the, uh, the, the, the one and only, the Lord and King of kings, the Lord of lords, for we praise your mighty name. Glory, hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. How is everyone doing? How is everyone doing? I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for tuning in. It's, it's been an incredible two weeks for me. I just have been doing a lot of studying and a lot of praying. And um, I just want to say that uh, as I was praying, um, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to do another. I wanted to cover something else. But I feel the Lord was leading me to go back and do a part two to the true meaning of freedom because I want people, to, because he wants people to truly understand what thus self the Lord. He wants people to truly understand what thus self the Lord, not thus self me. I'm not saying this. This is why I love to go in scripture. I love to show people the word of God because the word, this is where I'm getting this from. I'm not getting this from some what somebody told me. I'm getting it from the word of God itself. Therefore, it's what does self the Lord. And all I'm doing is just representing him. That's, that's it. That's it. Something I ran from for so long. I ran from it. I did not want to do it. I did not want to do this. Lord knows I did not want to do this. But it's my mission. It's my calling on my life. So, so be it. So be it. I, I must do it or else I will suffer. Because our Father God does not play. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth, Lord. Father, our Father, which art in, which art in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm, something to think about. On earth, the same as it is in heaven, he wants it done on earth. <laughs> Something to think about. I don't think I, I was just meditating on that on that on that prayer this the past couple of days and um, a few days ago. I mean, and I, I, that hit me on earth as it is in heaven. So glory, hallelujah. Let's jump right into it. Like I said, I want to go into this is going to be the second part. I mean, the true meaning of um, the true meaning of freedom part two. The true meaning of freedom part two. Um, please, please bear with me. Glory, hallelujah. If you love, if you truly love the Lord, you should, it says you will love his word. You would love his word. So it shouldn't matter about the time, really. 
It really shouldn't matter. I be listening to two hour, three hour sermons. I it, it, I love it. I can't stop listening to it. But you know, I understand we have lives. You know, but I I, I listen. I have a life too. You know, I go to work. I do these things, but I put him first above everything in my life. He comes first. And so, like I said, it says it says little children desire the sincere milk of the word. And that's what we're supposed to do because th that we may grow thereby. That's, there's no other way to grow. We must have his word in us. We must desire the word of God because there's no other way to grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless the reading of your word. Thank you, O oh Lord. I want to start in Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel chapter 33. And I'm going to go over verses 1 through 20. And then after I do 1 through 20, I'm going to jump around. I'm going to jump around. Just some things. There's certain things I forgot to show you in, in part 1. There's certain crucial verses that I forgot to show you in part 1. And I want to show you today. And this session may be a little bit longer be, just because I want to address certain questions that people were asking me. I want to address certain questions that people were asking me. So please bear with me. Bear with, bear with me. And I, I advise you strongly to watch this all the way to the end. Because it's going to be some really, really important things said that I feel need to be said and we need to hear so glory hallelujah ezekiel chapter 33 and father god right now in the name of jesus christ i pray that they watch the whole video i pray that they hear everything that you want them to hear oh lord open their ears and open their hearts in the name of jesus christ i pray amen amen Ezekiel chapter 33, the Lord was giving Ezekiel a word and it was very, very serious. This really blew my mind and it's so deep what he's saying. I'm just, I, I, it, I don't know what, what, I really wanted to do all of it, I, but I, I know I, I don't, I can't. This is why all of us have to study on our own, you know, because I can't show you everything in such little time. But this is very, very important what God said, and I felt people needed to hear it. And it's definitely a backup to the to part one. Definitely, without a shadow of a doubt. So, Ezekiel chapter 33. Let me see how much time. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, so this is a prophet. Ezekiel was a prophet, and the word of the Lord just used to come to him. I don't know if he used to just hear it or uh, uh, just uh, 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 if he envisioned it. Uh, uh, I don't know how, but God was truly speaking to Ezekiel to speak to his people. Okay, again, uh, again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Verse 2, son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon a land, when he brings a sword, when he's about to destroy a land, when he's about to do something terrible to a land. If the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, he's given an illustration, he's given a parable. He's saying, so if the people of that land, they know they know the sword coming, they take somebody and, and, and set them at watch, uh, a, a guard, a security guard. Verse 3, if, if when he see of the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, the watchman, he blows the trumpet. Uh, uh, is, hey, somebody's coming. You get prepared. Battle, the battle is coming. Verse 4, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and take of not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. 
if the, if, the, if the people hear the sound of the trumpet and take of not warning, if, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. Meaning the people that heard the trumpet, heard the warning of the watchman, but, 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 but decided not, 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 not to pay it any attention, then their blood would be on their own head. It would be their own fault. Verse 5, he heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that take of warning shall deliver his soul. But he that take of heed shall deliver his soul. Verse 6, but if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So therefore, the one that's taken away in his own iniquity, he's, he will suffer for his iniquity, for his evil, and, and the Lord will require their blood at the watchman's hand, who he instructed to warn the people. Verse 7, so thou, O son of man, I have set thee, Ezekiel, a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. This is why I do what I do. Because I have been sent by God to give people the truth and warn them. And so this is why this really caught my attention. And you won't believe what he was telling him to tell the people right after that. Let's look and see. Verse 7. No, verse 8. When I say unto the wicked, when I, the Lord, when I say, when I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou doest not speak to warn the wicked from his way. If, 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 if Ezekiel do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, from the way that he takes, from the wickedness that he produces, if he doesn't warn him from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. His blood will I require at your hand, Ezekiel. You will be responsible Ne ne verse 9 Nevertheless if thou warn the wicked of his way To turn from his way To turn from it If he do not turn from his way He shall die in his iniquity But thou hast delivered thy soul <laughs> Ezekiel If he don't turn from his way If he keep on doing what he want to do But you warn him anyway But uh, your soul will be delivered But he will be punished 10 Verse 10, therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, if our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, and we pine away. You look up that word, pine. I, I, I forgot to look it up. Pine, and we pine away in them. And we pine away in them. Pine. One second. I just want to act up now. And we pine away in them. The verb pine means to suffer a mental and physical decline. To suffer a mental and physical decline, especially because of a broken heart. To suffer a mental and physical decline is what pine means. And, 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 and so if we pine away in, in, in their sins, if, we, if, they, if, we, if they pine away in their sins, and they suffer a decline in their sins. I mean, they continuously sin and, and continuously suffer because of their sin and decline in life. 
because of their sin. Um, that's why I felt that that word really needed to be defined. Okay, and we pine away in them. How should we then live? There's no way. If we pine away in our sin, continue continue in our sin, how can we live? There's no way. Verse 10 says that. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, continue in them, and decline in them, how should we then live? Say unto them, verse 11, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. I don't want the death of the wicked. The Lord does not want this. I have no pleasure in this. But that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. Look at the Lord begging, begging. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. Turn from your evil ways. Stop. Repent. Turn ye. Turn ye from your evil ways is what he said in, in verse 11. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For why will ye die? Turn from your evil ways. He's focusing on that, on your evil ways. Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. Wow. I'm going to read it again. Verse 12. Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. Meaning, if you're, if you're being righteous, you're being righteous, you're continuing to do what's right. In the day that you transgress, that shall not your all the righteousness you have done shall not deliver you, and it's going to say that. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Uh, in the day for that the wicked turn from his wickedness, neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. I'm going to go on. I'll explain later. When I, verse 13. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity because our righteousness isn't righteous. We must seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the only way we know his righteousness is if we, is if we get into the word of God and see what he calls righteous. Okay? And, and, and if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity because our righteousness that we think is righteous is iniquity, is evil. All his righteousness shall not be remembered, but for his iniquity that he have committed, he shall die for it. All you can do right all you want. But as soon as you start committing iniquity, you, 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 you commit sin, ah, you got to die for it. Okay. Verse 14, again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right. Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. He warns him, you're going to die. You keep being wicked. You're going to die. But if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right. If the wicked restore the pledge, restore the pledge, meaning every, every promise you gave, you need to restore that. Every, every, every debt that you owe, every, every pledge, restore it, restore it. And you can do that in, in more ways than one. If you can't pay that same person back, you can pay by feeding the poor. You know, go do, doing those things and, and, and restore the pledge, restore the pledge. And, and, and give again that that he had robbed. Give again that whatever you took away. Give like if you took love away and didn't restore and didn't give love back. Give love unto others. You know different things of that nature. If you if you owe people, pay that back what you owe. But if you can't find that person that you owe, give to the poor, and and, and you will be given that what you robbed, what you took away. Uh, walk in the statutes of life without commit without committing iniquity. Walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity. The Lord is telling us to do something that is, is definitely possible to do if he said do it. If, the, if, if God said do it, then it must be possible. He said, 
give, give, he said, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity. He shall surely live. He shall not die. None of his sins that he have committed shall be mentioned unto him. He have done that which is lawful and right. He, he turned around. He changed his life. Now he's living for God. Behold, he is a new man. He is a new creature. He walketh in light. He doeth righteousness. He doeth his righteousness. He have done that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. Verse 17. Yet the children of thy people, this is how we sound today. The children of thy people, Ezekiel, the way of the Lord is the, the, the church, yet the children of thy people say, the way of the Lord is not equal. But as for them, their way is not equal. <laughs> this is what so God is saying, the people are saying to me, my way is not equal. That I'm not, I'm not right by saying this. In other words, like in this day and time, I feel like since people are saying it's impossible to live without sin and, and, and what you're telling us to do is impossible, Lord. Even his disciples at one time told Jesus Christ, Lord, who then can be saved? Nobody can do all this. And Jesus said, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. I said this in part one. But with God, all things are possible. This is what our Lord Jesus Christ said. So, but, for, but as for them, their way is not equal is what the Lord is saying. Your way is not equal. Get it right and stay right is what he's saying. Do not fall back. Don't keep going back. He's not pleased with the backslider. He's not pleased with those that have a double heart. No, you will not have a double heart. No, you will be cold or hot for him. You cannot be lukewarm. It says he'll spew you out of his mouth. So what does that mean? That means that we must be hot. We must be on fire for him. We must be on fire for him. We must stay hot. We must remain hot. And with God, this is possible. We seek him. We seek his righteousness. When Verse 18. When the righteous turn up, he says it all again to make sure that you heard what he said. When the righteous turn up from his righteousness and commit of iniquity, he shall even die thereby. You stop doing what's right and commit iniquity, commit sin, Commit evil, then you shall surely die. You shall surely die. But if, verse 19, but if the wicked turn from his wickedness, notice he keeps saying, his, turn from his wickedness, his, turn from his way, turn from his evil way. Not just believe on him, but turn from your wicked way. Repent. Turn the other way. And do that, but if the wicked turn from his wickedness and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. Verse 20, yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. O ye house of Israel, I will judge you every one after his ways. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I, I, he said, I will judge you, everyone, after his ways. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 20. You've heard the Lord speak. I did not write this. The Lord has spoken and warned his people. He, want, he said, it's not, he don't have pleasure in the death of the wicked. He don't, he don't want you to die. He don't want this for you. He, he wants you to be like him. He wants you to be holy so we can dwell with him forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. He wants us to be like him. He wants it to be a, 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 a place that's pure without no iniquity, without sin, that's pure. And if he makes us like him, then that is truly heaven where there will be, there will be love. There will be no hate. There will be no envy. There will be no none of that. There, there will be no none of that. There, 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 there will be righteousness galore. There, there will be, wow, uh, 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 faith and belief and, 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 and trust. And, 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 and it's, just so, it's, just so, it's just so wonderful if you think about it. A place with no violence. Yes, a place with no wrath. Think about this is what he's developing. This is why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to manifest all of this, to bring all of this to pass, to, to make us like him. 
Glory be to God. Let's go to the verses that I said I did not say last time. Um, I want to go to... John chapter 5. John chapter 5. I want to show you show you something real quick in here. We're going to go through verses 10 through 14 real quick. Real quick, real quick. Verses 10 through 14. Okay. Verses 10 through 14. John chapter 5. And in verses 10 through 14, uh, just to bring you up, because I don't want to read all of it. This is the man that was that was that that wanted to be that got healed from being he was in, he was uh, crippled for uh, I think it said was it 38 years? Yep, 38 years he was crippled. He couldn't walk. He was impotent. He couldn't walk. He was crippled, and he sat by the, the pool of Bethesda, I think. Bes I don't know how to pronounce. I know I'm pronouncing it wrong, <laughs> but yeah, Bethesda, Bethesda. He, he was by the pool with it because this pool was special back in their days. An angel used to come and trouble the water, and whoever was stepping to the water at that time would be healed at a certain time of the, of the year. And uh, he said, this man said, he said, it, the, Jesus went up to him and said, would I be made whole? He said, Lord, every time I try to go to the pool, everybody come before me. And then he said. Rise up and then the Lord Jesus told him rise up and walk and he stood up and walked immediately And so the Jews therefore seen what was done and this is what they say at verse 10 The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured It is the Sabbath day it is not lawful for the for thee to carry thy bed He answered them Jesus he that made me no no I'm tomorrow I'm sorry the dude that was he that was cured He said he that he answered them he that made me whole the same said said unto me, take up thy bed and walk. I'm just doing what he told me to do. He cured me. And so, verse 12, then as they 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 him, what man is that which said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? And and verse 13, and, and he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. And and, and verse 14, afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and saith. And said unto him, Behold, listen, listen, behold, this is what Jesus, Jesus went back around, found a man and said, Look, behold, thou art made whole. You're healed now. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. I want you to hear the severity of of those words this man had been crippled he could not walk for 38 years Jesus said sin no more lest a worse thing happen to you oh, something worse than that goodness gracious Lord help me not to sin Help me, Lord. Please help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to stay in thy will. Behold, thou art, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Uh, let's, go to, um, let's go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. I'm sure this, remember the adulterous woman. Remember the adulterous woman. The adulterous woman. Remember the adulterous woman. That they wanted to stone because she had committed adultery and she was caught in the very act. And back in the law, in the in the old in the old testament, they used that there was a law where if a woman committed adultery, she was to be stoned to death immediately. And so this is why the Jews wanted to stone her. And so he he said he and then Jesus was changing all that because he said he without sin cast the first cast the first stone. He that is without sin, that never sinned before, cast the first stone. And so, okay, we all know that. Now, let me show you something. In verse 10, chapter 8, verse 10, John chapter 8, verse 10, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, everybody left, they dropped their stones and left. He said unto her, woman, where are thine accusers? Where are the people that accuse you, woman? Have no man condemned thee? 
she's in verse 11 she said no man lord and jesus said unto her neither do i condemn thee go and sin no more the reason i showed y'all those two verses before i go on why would the lord jesus christ the, our Lord and Savior who knows all, who knows more than what we think we know, who created us, knows every capability we have, every everything that we're not capable of. He knows everything. He knows everything. He can and can make us do anything he wants us to do. He's all powerful, all knowledgeable, and, and, and there is nothing that's withheld from him. Why would he tell us to do something that we cannot do? That does not make a bit of sense. And so the enemy has took the word thereby and twisted it, taking certain verses and running with them. And I will address that at the end of this video. Jesus told the woman and the man, go and sin no more. He told the man, go and sin no more. Lest, uh, uh, before, uh, if you do something else worse will happen to you. Go and sin no more. The Lord will not tell us to do something we cannot do. He came to free us from sin. I repeat, he came to free us from sin. The Lord said, only believe. Only believe. If you don't believe, then how can you achieve? If you don't believe then how can you achieve if you're telling yourself, man, we can't do that. We can't do that. I, I, I can, I, I, oh, ye of little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. The Lord said it. It's in the word of God. I believe what he said. I believe he will make me whole. I believe he will make me whole. It shall be done in this day and time. And on earth it shall be done. Thy will be done, Lord, on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. So, I'm finished with that. The, 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 the message is finished. All in that. But, it's a couple of things I want to show you. Oh, matter of fact, before I, before I go on, let's go back to John chapter 5. I want to show you something real quick. Now, I just want to jump around and show you a few things. And I will address the questions that, were, that, that, that people asked me. I will address the questions. Let's go to John chapter, back to John chapter 5. And look at what Jesus said right here. He said, he was talking about in the end, in the end of, in the end of times when he shall come back. Um, I want to start at, I want to read two verses out of 28 to 29. And please go back and read the whole chapter. Go back and study this chapter. Go back and study everything I'm showing you, please. Go back and study for your your for everlasting life is on the line. When 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 we get it when we get before God, like he, he's gonna tell you you've been warned. You've been warned. Remember that day and this 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 probably will come up. Remember that day, this and that, this and that. Uh, remember this person told you. Remember that person told you. During judgment day, there will be no excuses. Okay. Verse twenty eight and twenty nine. Marvel not at this. This is Jesus talking. Marvel not at this. For the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Shall hear his voice. 29. And shall come forth. Oh, everybody that is in the graves is going to come a day where it's time to be judged. Rise, come forth. What a powerful day. What a powerful day that is. What a powerful day. What a powerful day. And 20 verse 29, and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. The second death. Please don't get it twisted. Please don't get it twisted. They that have done good 
and they that have done evil. It, 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 the two people going two different places. The one that's doing good and the one that's doing evil going to each their, their own place. Do not get it twisted. Please do not be deceived. Okay, let's go to uh, Romans chapter 3. Well, I want to show you this in Romans chapter 2 real quick. And then I'm going to go on and address the questions. Okay. Romans chapter 2 verse 6 through 9 reads, Who will, well I got to read 5, but after thy hardness, he's talking to the people at this time who were rebellious against the, the true word of God against the word that Paul was preaching to the Romans. And so he says in verse 5, but after thy hardness, after your hardness and impenitent heart, meaning a heart that's not that's not uh repentant, a heart that's not sorrowful, a heart that's not contrite. Uh, 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 but after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day against the day you treasure wrath in yourself against the day of wrath of, and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. It's like you treasuring your your wrath. Uh, you, you, again, uh, you, let me read that again. Sorry. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath, anger against the day of wrath. And revelation and revelation. Oh, it's going to be revealed. It's going to be. Oh, wow. It's been revealed. You have you had a, you, you have a sudden re revelation when Jesus comes back. A, a revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Then it says uh, colon. This is a colon right here. Colon mark. Meaning it's continuing into something else. Who will render to every man. God will render to every man. According to his deeds. Who will render to every man according to his deeds. We just read this in Ezekiel chapter 33. To them who by patient continue. To them who by patient. We're going to give you two different sets of people. Who he's going to render to. To them who by patient continuance in well doing. Patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality eternal life the ones who by with their patience continue in well-doing be not weary of well-doing for in due time thou shalt thou shalt reap thou shalt reap what you sow be not weary be not weary in well-doing to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious, and they're content with where they at, and do not obey the truth. Let me read that again. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth. But obey unrighteousness and indignation. You obey unrighteousness, indignation, and you obey wrath. You are the slave to sin. You obey that. You obey indignation, jealousy. You obey wrath, anger. You obey those things. Those are your, you, you're, you're under their subjection. You, if you obey them, tribulation and anguish is appointed to you. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. Of the Jew first and also to the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that work of good. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. Hallelujah. 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 Now let's go to. Now. I want to begin. To address the questions. One person told me a verse. That is very popular. It says. No, there, is no, there is none that is righteous. No not one. 
is right here in the very next chapter in Romans chapter 3. It says, um, verse 10, it says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none. Well, before I go on, I'm going I'm to show, show you something. And then in verse 23, it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay. And people take those scriptures and run with them. But see, let me explain something to everyone. This is why the Lord says, study to show thyself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Because if you miss, if, if you don't, if you don't, if you miss, if you leave something out, then the word cannot be clearly understood. And, and so thereby people are deceived. So please understand this. Please understand this. We have to study to show ourselves approved. And when you study, you don't just stop at one scripture and just run with it. Read, the, read all of it and, 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 and understand why is he saying what he's saying. Where is he getting this from? All of that. Well, I'm going to help you understand a little bit of that today. And just this scripture right here. So for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And there, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Right. OK. Now, if you read around that, if you read the whole chapter, you go back and read the whole chapter. It's very deep. And I will need you to understand he's getting this from the Old Testament. Notice this said as it is written. These are verses he have gotten from the Old Testament, particularly in this verse. He's got it. He got it from to give, to give you an example. He got it from um, Psalms. Psalms chapter 53, verse one, two and three. Go and read it when you get a chance. He got this from that. And the Lord was saying this through David at the time because. <coughs> Because of what he was seeing at that time, at that moment, and what is what Israel was doing. So now, now that gives you a deeper understanding of why he said this. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Okay. Now look at verse 11. There is none that understands, there, that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Now, will you take that scripture also and run with it and say, that there's none that seek God. There's none that understands. There is people that understand now in this day and time. There is people that, that, are, that are receiving understanding. I'm receiving understanding. As of right now, I am seeking God. So that cannot mean that everybody is not seeking God. No, everybody in the world right now is not seeking God. Does it mean that? No. He's quoting something. He's trying to give you an understanding. And now for the verse, the other verse, it says, for all have sinned. And yes, we all have sinned. Yes, that is correct. We all have sinned. That's past tense. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The woman that committed adultery, she have sinned. Jesus seen it. The people seen it. They were about to stone her for it. She have sinned. The impotent man, he have sinned. But Jesus said, go and sin no more. Look no more in the past. Go and sin no more. Oh. So we need to seek his righteousness. And pray that he fix, fixes our heart. And make us whole. And believe that he has the power to do it. And he will accomplish the thing that he wants to accomplish. The word shall not come back unto him void. It will accomplish the thing that which he sent it to do, which is to make us, which is to cleanse us and to make us whole, which is to cleanse us and make us like him. Jesus was sent for to be our example. If you put all of this together, then you will begin to believe what the word says and not run with this one scripture saying, oh, all is a, that we're going to always be like this. No. Yes, we all have sinned. Now let me go to the to the other verse that was mentioned to me. And this one is really simple. 
this one is really simple. And I just really, really want to encourage people to study more. Just study more, study more. And the more you study, you'll begin to see. God is not the author of confusion. It, it, you just have to study. Sometimes he hides things because he wants you to look. He wants, to, he wants you to seek after him. He wants you to seek him with all of your heart. He wants you to seek him with all of your heart. Glory, hallelujah. All right. Let's go to 1 John. Chapter 1. I'm there. <laughs> Glory be to God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. First John chapter seven, I mean chapter one, verse eight. And then when we um um when we when I read this verse, because I, I want to show you what it says before the verse and after the verse, but I'm gonna read the, the verse first. So verse first John chapter chapter one. Verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. And they stop right there. The, the, a lot of pastors in this day and time, they say these verses and they stop right there. But if you go back and read and study, and look at what it says. Look at what it says around the verse. Look at what it says around the verse. The Bible does not contradict we, yes, we are, we were born into sin because Adam, by Adam coming into, the, by Adam committing the, the, the sin, we all have, that was the curse for all men. We were born, we were automatically born into sin. But just as one man, Adam, came into the world, this is in Romans chapter 5 is where I'm getting this from. As Adam came into the world and, 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 and caused every man to be up under sin by his mistake, just so has Jesus Christ, the one man, came into the world that we that he may redeem us from sin and bring us out of sin, bring us out of the bondage of sin. This is how it goes. This is the correct way. This is the correct meaning. And so, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us true. We are, are, are this flesh is of sin. Yes, yes. Now, let's read verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the... No, let me read verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. Oh, 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 if I walk in darkness and I say I got fellowship with, God, with, with Christ, we lie. He said it again. We lie and do not the, and do not the truth. Verse 7. But if we walk in the light... As he is in the light, there it is again. As he is in the light, our example, our Lord Jesus Christ, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. There it is. Again. There it is again. And then he said, if, now, if you say that you have no sin already before you get before you are cleansed. Now you see the whole concept? Before you're cleansed, then we deceive ourselves. Oh, I'm good. I, that's what the Lord meant by your own righteousness. Oh, I'm good. I, I, don't, I don't need to deceive Christ. I, 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 I'm good by myself. I, I, don't, I don't do this and I don't do that. Yeah, but, but in your heart, you do this and you do that. So Jesus wants to come inside you and cleanse your heart. And so that's why he said, he, Jesus Christ, by his blood, will cleanse us from all sin. From all sin. Glory, hallelujah. From all sin. And then it says, verse 9, if we, okay, let me read verse 8 again. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, like being straight up, Lord, I can't stop, I can't stop lusting. Please, Lord, help me with this. Fast and pray, whatever you got to do. Pray, confess. Repent. Pray, confess, repent. Pray about this thing. Whatever it is, you can't stop smoking, pray. Pray until it stops. He's all powerful. He will do it. Have faith. Pray. Pray. Get into your word, which cleanses us from all sin. Get into the word. Get into the word. Pray. 
and I, I, whatever it is, you keep envying people. You keep you 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 you're, you're coveting people. You 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 you're always angry. You 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 you're hateful. Whatever whatever the case may be, God can cleanse your heart. Behold, you are you. Can, he will make you a new creature. So it says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful. He is faithful, and He's just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we may spend eternity with him. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now, now do we understand the full meaning? Now do we understand? Please understand. For your eternity is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. We only die once and then there's judgment. We only die once and then there's judgment. So whatever that you feel, whatever sin that you feel you're having problems with, confess it to him. Go and pray about it and seek his face. And I guarantee you, he will deliver you from that very thing. He's all powerful, but we have to have faith in him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So believe what he's saying in his word and just take it for what it says. Believe and seek his face and continue to try and try to do what's right. And you will be delivered. Blessed are ye that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for you shall be filled. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Father God, I pray. I first of all, I just want to give you honor and glory. I thank you for your greatness. I thank you for your very existence. I praise and honor your name. Father God, you said your word should not come back void. I pray that it does just what it does and it accomplishes the thing that you want it to accomplish. So let it stick into the hearts of your people. Let it stick into our hearts, O oh Lord, till it begin to convict us and that we repent of our evil ways, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord. That we may experience the good that you have for us. Help us, O oh Lord, to seek your face with all of our heart and all of our mind, of all of our soul. Help us to love you above everything else. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke every work of the enemy. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. Get thee behind us, Satan. Stop every lie, O oh Lord. Conquer every lie with your truth. Conquer every lie with your truth. Let your truth be manifested. Let your truth be manifested and remain forever and ever. Your word shall endure forever as well as your mercy. O oh Father God, have mercy on us. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining once again. I'm using a different camera right now. I, at first, I didn't like it, but I prayed about it, and the Lord changed it. <laughs> it looks wonderful. I, at first, it looked terrible, man. The power of prayer, ladies and gentlemen. Have a blessed, blessed week. Amen.